Kia ora, I'm Eleanor Duro. I'm going to be reading the first story from my book, Ophelia Wilde, Deadly Detective, illustrated by Tracy Duncan. Scary Stories The countdown began at the start of the year. School camp is finally, finally here. The children spill out of the bus with a whoosh, with a clatter of bags to the sounds of the bush. Last to the dorms is a smelly old skunk, Ophelia bellows. Bags the top bunk. The best bunks are calling. Bare feet go fast. She kicks off her sneakers and sprints through the grass. If only, she thinks, her friend Albert were here, but his camp is not till the end of the year. She's left her assistant, chief spy, on his own to manage their wild secret service alone. Ophelia's thoughts are cut short by a jab in the sole of her foot, a needle-sharp stab. Ow! Double ow! What is that sting? She hops as she flicks out the prickle-like thing. A mother runs over. Are you all right? Looks like a bee sting, I'd say, at first sight. Ophelia's foot is starting to swell. Who might be a little allergic as well. Don't worry, the mother says. Could have been worse. I'm Beatrix's mum, by the way, and a nurse. Come to the sick bay. We'll soon sort you out. Beatrix, bags to the sick bay, she shouts. At the sick bay, there isn't an ankle to see. Ophelia's foot has ballooned to her knee. Beatrix enters and sits on the bed. Wow, quite impressive. That's one giant leg. Will it explode? Can it be fixed? I'm Beatrix Berg, by the way. Call me Trix. The mother of Trix orders ice pack and rest. A few nights in sick bay might be for the best. Ophelia's thinking, did I hear right? No ghost stories, bunk beds or late pillow fights? Sorry, says Beatrix. That really sucks. I guess that makes two of us down on our luck. For me, it's the sick bay or no camp at all. I haven't been well. It wasn't my call. So it lights out when everyone heads off to bed. There are two who are stuck in the sick bay instead, where behind a partition, a jet engine roars. <laughs> Maybe it's somebody's mother who snores. To make matters worse, there are squeals of delight as the din from the dorms drifts across through the night. Beatrix Bird, are you awake? Ophelia hisses. She gives her a shake. I guess I am now, if I wasn't before, Beatrix says. Oh no, did I snore? Relax, says Ophelia, that's just your mum. But hear all that shouting? We're missing the fun. Camp is for doing, sleeps for the bus. A ghost story session, perhaps, just for us. Beatrix yawns. Oh, okay, I'm in. Give me your scariest one to begin. Are you sure you won't scream? Checks Ophelia first. You'll never make me scream, says Trix. Do your worst. Then I'll start with the one where Adele meets her doom. It began, says Ophelia, here in this room. Five years ago, on a night dark and cold, Adele is on camp when our story unfolds. She'd fainted at dinner, concussioned her head, so they sent her to sick bay and kept her in bed. Twas just after midnight she woke to a sound, a mixture of shrieking and feet scraping ground. Adele was alone, the nurse wasn't back, a teacher was having a mild heart attack. Then came the knocking. Who's there? Adele cried. But the knocks just grew louder. And no one replied. Help me, she called. Nobody came. She drew back the curtains. 
There, pressed to the pain, an army of zombies. Mine! They all hissed, their flesh rotting off them and fangs bared like this. Ophelia holds up a torch to her chin, baring her teeth in a grimacing grin. So if you hear knocking, don't answer the door. It might be the zombies who come back for more. <coughs> Ophelia jumps. Gotcha, says Trix with the old knocking stunt. Ophelia says, that was part of my act. I knew all along it was you for a fact. The knocking noise changes. This Trixie is good. It sounds just like footsteps on roof iron wood. Um, that wasn't me, Trixie wails. It's the truth. They look at each other. Then who's on the roof? This time it's near, almost as though the thing's smelling their fear. Ophelia gulps. As I'm trained in detection, I'm going outside for a visual inspection. Don't you watch movies, says Beatrix sadly. Split up too soon and it always ends badly. What if the zombies attack and you're bitten? Someone will need to explain your condition. Ophelia answers. Then strictly no talking. You might need to help me a bit with the walking. They open the door and exit the porch. Here, says Ophelia, passing the torch. Trix trains the flashlight to shine on the roof. In its cold, eerie beam, they discover the truth. A large pair of eyes stares back at the light. Ghostly and glowing, they shine in the night. A shadowy body, teeth sharp and white. A zombified possum, frozen in fright. They look at each other. Possum, that's all. So much commotion from something so small. I'm busting, laughs Trixie. Where is the loo? Over there, says Ophelia. I'm coming too. The bathroom is busy. The girls have to wait in a rather long line, even though it's so late. Did anyone see it? There's lots of loud chat. Something was out there. I'm scared to go back. <clears throat> says Ophelia, loudly, for show. We've solved the whole case. Who'd like to know? Come back with us, we'll tell you some more, but you'll have to ignore Trixie's mum and her snore. Back in the sick bay, the guests sit entranced as Ophelia's story retold is enhanced. It began long ago in the same dorm as you. Adele was at camp on that fateful night too. While the other girls slept, on the door came a tap. Just the wind, Adele said, going back to her nap. But the tapping grew louder and hard to ignore. How annoying, she thought, as she braved the cold floor. She didn't know then there were zombies outside, or she mightn't have opened the door quite so wide. Now she paces these grounds and the roofs after dusk, a ghost of a girl in a zombified husk. Beatrix knocks. <gasps> the audience gasps and in unison jump. And you'd know for a fact, Trixie adds. It's not lies if you'd seen all those maggots crawl out of her eyes. And the nostrils, Ophelia adds for good measure. And her mouth, the girls gag with a bit too much pleasure. It's midnight before the guests sneak to their dorm. Same time tomorrow, the visitors yawn. Ophelia comments when everyone goes. I think we pulled that one off like we were pros. Trixie replies, 
You have to agree, sick bay is the best when you share it with me. Ophelia says, Beatrix Bird, you're a force to be reckoned with, haven't you heard? And rooming with you could so be the best, if only your mother would give us some rest. A deafening whistle with snorts fills the air. Earplugs, says Trixie. I've got a spare pair 